Hey everyone, Kevin from mechanicaladvantage.com. This week I've been working with a few users and I've done some dimensioning things that I received some questions on about how I did them. So I thought it would be a good idea to take it some time and do a little video on things the dimension command can do that we might not be readily aware of. And we're gonna go through a couple files and see what we can do. So the first is when dealing with arcs and circles. As we know, if I start the dimension command and I click on a circle, I'm gonna get a diameter. You see the diameter symbol up front? And if I start the dimension command again, clear my selection and click on the radius, I'm gonna get the R up front showing me that I'm on a radius. But sometimes you want the opposite thing. Even though you have a radius, you might wanna do a dimension or a, a diameter, I mean to say. Or if you have a diameter, you might want to do a radius dimension. So Fusion gives you the opportunity to uh, do the opposite thing if you want to. Now the catch with this is, is how you go about doing it. I can't drag out a circle and in the middle of this command tell Fusion that I want this diameter to be a radius instead and add the, the radius dimension. So that's not possible right now. So what we have to do sort of first instead is just drag out a rough shape and then we'll go dimension it. So knowing that, let's go take a look at our example and see what we can do. I'm going to start the dimension command and I'm going to click on this diameter. And while the dimension's attached to my mouse, I haven't clicked to place it yet. I'm going to right click and choose radius. Now I can get the opposite thing. So I can go ahead and place that and tell Fusion what the radius value I want here is. So I could call that two or something like that. The same thing will happen with radius dimension. So I'm gonna start the radius, uh, the dimension, click on the radius. It's giving me the radius. And instead I wanna right click and choose diameter. And I can go ahead and place that and get the diameter dimension. So I'll just call this 7.5. And there's my dimension. Now, if you do forget along the way, uh, let's just take this dimension off. And let's say that I place a dimension on here and I get a diameter four, but I really want that to be a radius of two. I can right click and choose to toggle that dimension to radius. So if I entered in uh, four to start out with, so it was a diameter of four and I toggle it, you know, it'll, it'll switch back over to what I want it to be. So you can, you can toggle the dimension after the fact. You may have to readjust your dimension size to get the entity that you want since you dimensioned the opposite thing. So that's one example of something you can do with a dimension command. Let's hop over here to this uh, example. And what I'm showing here is this is a part that I want to end up revolving. And instead of, I'm only drawing half of it because I'm going to revolve it all the way around, but I want to specify what the bore diameter is going to be. So instead of going and doing something like uh, this to this and then placing that and doing a divide by two to get the final dimension that I want we can work a little bit different and get fusion give us a diameter dimension even though we only have half of our design so to do this it's kind of important we're gonna start with the dimension command and your first selection has to be your centerline reference you cannot go here and then select this a second and it currently has to be this one first then your outer part that you want to go to and now you'll see that I have this 4.79, whatever it might be. I may want to, uh, let's, let's make this a little bit more of a challenging board. Let's say that I want this board diameter to be 5 and 11 sixteenths, and, or I'm sorry, 10 and 11 sixteenths, and I don't know what the decimal equivalent of 11 sixteenths is. So I can get Fusion to do this for me. Um, I'm going to, before I place this dimension now, I'm going to right click and choose diameter dimension. Now before you do anything, it doesn't change. So what you have to do is just jiggle the mouse a little bit and now you'll see we get the diameter dimension. I'm gonna left click to place it. And if you want, we can also enter in fractional dimensions inside of Fusion. So I'm gonna say 10 space 11 slash 16 and go ahead and hit okay. And Fusion calculates that dimension out for me. So you can see even though I've driven, drawn half of the sketch, I'm getting the full diameter when I dimension this. So I don't have to do any kind of math to figure that out. Let's hop over to another example. So here I have kind of a slot shape that I want to work with. And I also have another shape over here that's kind of similar. You'll see that a uh, little bit different workflows between these, but not too much. So my goal here is I want to dimension from the tangent of the arc to the tangent of the arc. And if I start the dimension command and click on the arc and click on the arc, what Fusion's going to do is give me the center to center dimension. So to get the tangent arc to tangent arc, I'm gonna start the dimension command and before I do anything, I'm gonna right click and choose pick circle arc tangent. Now I can click anywhere on this arc and click anywhere on this arc and Fusion is now going to give me the total uh, dimension that I want. Maybe I'll say that that's seven inches. 
and it looks like I have some uh, predefined dimensions over here that I wasn't intending to do. So let me just go ahead and delete off a constraint here so I can get some freedom back on this. And we'll delete this dimension off as well. Now I can move this up and down, change it. Okay, so the other thing that you might do at times is start the dimension command, choose your first entity, then right click and choose pick circle arc tangent. And that would, if I would have clicked the right thing there, let me try that again, D for dimension, uh, click on my first thing, right click, pick circle arc tangent, click on the arc. And now you can dimension between, you can see fusion can even figure it out both ways depending on where you put your mouse. You can get between that straight line and the tangent. So that can be uh, pretty handy. It'll work on angles and, and other things like that as well. Let's take a look at the last example. And this one uh, is something that I sort of learned uh, when I was at a college in Indianapolis called Ivy Tech doing a little training where one of the attendees, attendees discovered that this was uh, something we could do. So typically what I could would do with this particular example is I would draw a line as construction from here to here and then back up to here. And then I would put a dimension between these two things and that would set my angular dimension. So I want to kind of combine some of the things we've been talking about this video and see some other functionality that Fusion can do. So I might start my uh, dimension command and I'm gonna click on my radius here and this is gonna be a bull hole circle. So instead of a radius, I want a diameter. So I'm gonna right click and toggle it to be a diameter. And I want this to be a diameter of six inches. And go ahead and hit enter and now I've set my size. I also want this to be symmetrically located about the Y axis here. Um, and so you can see as I drag it, we're not symmetric. If I had a center line reference, I could easily make that symmetric, but I don't really want to draw in extra geometry if I don't have to. So what I'm going to do is use my horizontal and vertical constraint between these two points to make those two endpoints horizontal. Now, no matter how I adjust it, I'm guaranteed to be symmetric about the uh, axis. And the last thing I want to do is add my dimension uh, that controls the angle between the center. So pretty cool functionality here. I'm going to start the dimension command click on the center here, the center point of the origin, and then the center of the other slot. And when I do that, Fusion will give me the ability to enter in an angle without drawing in any reference geometry between those two centers to pull that off. So um, that's new to me, and it's really a super helpful little tip right there that prevents you from having to draw construction geometry to get that very same thing done. So hopefully that helps uh, everyone understand a few more of the dimension options that you have available to you. And as I always say, my training classes, when in doubt, right click to see what's available to you. Go ahead and look at that right click menu to see, are there any options that will uh, give me in anything that this command isn't showing that I can do. If you have any questions, please leave them down below in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching.